Welcome to Let Your Light Shine, the podcast where we illuminate the path to your best self. I'm your host, John Fletcher on Louis Hartrick, and I'm so excited to have you join us on this journey of empowerment and self-discovery. Today and in each episode, we'll dive deep into the themes inspired by the book, Let Your Light Shine, Unleashing Your Inner Glow Through Essential Self-Care Practices for Empowered Women. This podcast is for anyone seeking to cultivate their inner glow, embrace their power, and truly let their light shine. In our conversations, we'll explore different topics that resonate with women and girls from all walks of life. We'll discuss the shine method, practical and transformative self-care practices like sleep, proper hydration, tuning into our intuition and nourishing our bodies while remaining fully engaged. But that's not all. We'll also delve into cultivating joy through hobbies, practicing grace, forgiveness, and engaging in activities that make our souls light up. Each episode features incredible women who share their stories, wisdoms, and insights They are entrepreneurs, creatives, professionals, mothers, daughters, all shining examples of how embracing these practices can lead to a fulfilled and empowered life. So whether you're looking to ignite a new spark in your life or fan the flames of an existing one, Let Your Light Shine is here to guide and inspire you. Remember, for more resources and information, You can always visit lightshinebook.com. Let's get started and explore together how we can all let our light shine brighter. Join me, Jocelyn Jean-Louis Hardrick, in this empowering journey. Here's to letting our lights shine together. And now, let's dive in to today's episode. So how do you take care of yourself? Let's start talking about that because, you know, you're doing all the things and you're doing them very well and looking great doing it. But, you know, a lot of people don't know all the stuff that's going on behind the scenes and all the people that's supporting you. So we want to make sure that we talk about how we take care of ourselves. So we know the shine, the S stands for sleep. How much sleep do you get and how do you manage everything and make sure you're well rested and restored? I know, sleep, I would say it depends. It's the common attorney response of it depends. I definitely keep in my mind, like I need eight hours of sleep, right? So either I try to force myself to go to sleep earlier to try to tell myself, okay, well, I know I need to be up at this time because I need to be ready for work and go and leave the house at this time. And obviously there's some days where I'm not, you know, some days, you know, getting six hours of sleep. Some days even less because let's say if if there's certain things I have to do for work that are urgent and some certain projects that I'm working on that just need to be done and and that pushes into, you know, sleep time. But what I noticed is on the days that I'm not getting at a minimum, let's say at a minimum six, even that's cutting it low. So let's say the really the target should be seven is your minimum. I'm not functioning my best that day. Like I can feel like that I'm tired. Um, so yes, sometimes caffeine can help, but really what is caffeine doing to our bodies? Um, if anything, you're kind of tearing your body down more to try to push through. So mentally I try to tell myself, okay, seven, eight hours of sleep and, and let's try, try to get that or to try to rest throughout the day. If I can, if I'm not getting enough sleep as I should be. So it's definitely always a work in progress, kind of like with anything else to try to to fit any type of wellness into my life. But I definitely try to tell myself, okay, no, you got to turn off the TV. You got to turn turn off your phone, you know? Sometimes I use like different type of meditation apps. And I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I like to just listen to a YouTube crime series on my phone because I pay for the YouTube subscription, like um, the service. And so I can lock my phone and play it in the background. So I'll usually put it on my my nightstand and I'll listen to like, some crime show. And that actually helps me go to sleep faster. So by doing those things, though, it forces me to go to sleep. 
because sometimes we don't realize, oh, if we're just on Instagram mindlessly scrolling right before bed, like you end up spending an hour, two hours just by doing that. And then sometimes if you're watching, oh, one more episode, what you have to tell yourself, like, no, this episode, you know, can wait. If that's how you're de-stressing yourself like that night, you just got to tell yourself, no, like put those boundaries. But you, I feel like I have to have that conversation with myself. Oh, if not like on a nightly basis, you know, every few nights I'm telling my, okay, no, Maggie, like it's time. You got to, you got to go to bed. You need this rest. Like rest is important. Yeah, you made some really good points. You know, TV and social media are designed to be addictive. That's why it's like yes. you, you think I'll spend five minutes and it ends up being 60 minutes or two hours because I've had that issue as well. And it's good what you said. You have to talk to yourself. Like I talk to myself all the time. Some people think it's weird, but I'm like, you know, we have to like, hey, girl. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you need that sleep, right? Because in the moment, your brain is just feeding off of the addiction of social media and TV. And then there's the blue light, which makes your brain thinks it's daytime and it stays awake. So it messes up your circadian rhythm. So those are some good tips. And then you're not the first person to say crime shows. A lot of women like crime shows. I don't <laughs> it's they're so popular amongst women and it helps them go to sleep. So, you know, you got to experiment with what works, but there's also some great meditations on YouTube that you can play yes. in the background. I usually play sleep music and it helps me and my kids. We all get nice and sleepy and relaxed. So find what works for you. And so that way you're using your phone and your apps, but in a way that's helping you instead of keeping you up. So, but it's good that she said you notice when you're not getting enough. What happens to you when you're not getting enough sleep? Oh, I'm, I get cranky. You know, sometimes I don't even want to see people. Like I'll walk, if, especially if I'm in the office, I'll lock, you know, my, not lock the door, but I'll just shut the door. And I just don't really want to interact because I know I have to get more work done that day. And I'm just not as fun and bubbly. And, you know, I'm just basically trying to get through those hours just so then that way I could sleep and then maybe feel more alive the next day. But I, you can, you can just tell your body's telling you like, you messed up. Like, you messed up. I needed this and you messed it up for me. Yeah. And then, you know, a couple of days here and there, like you said, when you have some busy things happening in your schedule, it's understandable. I have young kids. They don't always want to go to sleep or they get sick. But the key is to, like, balance it. Once you notice, okay, I can't go too long like this. So something has to give so that I can have more sleep. So we just want to make sure that we're mindful of that and mm -hmm. working on getting sleep, especially as women doing all the things. Um, so hydration, I have my, um, water every time I'm doing these. Me too. I'm drinking from my <laughs> cup. There you go. <laughs> so what are your tips? How do you stay hydrated and how does the, you know, what are the best tips you have? So I always, we have lots of bottles everywhere. Actually, I try to leave a couple bottles in my house and, and well, in front of me on my desk area at home. And then in my office, too, I have two bottles. Usually one is for water. The bigger one is for water. The other one is what keeps my coffee warm. But I try to tell myself, OK, like I, I'm done. I have to keep sipping on water throughout the day. So I, sometimes I've tried where your phone can like remind you like, oh, you know, drink water now. Like they have these at different apps that you can use. But sometimes, I, you know, it's so easy to just hit like ignore and then move on. But I try to stay hydrated with water. I also try because sometimes unless you really, I feel like, uh, how do I explain it? When I'm working out, that's usually when I want water the most or if I'm doing like a lot of physical activity. Sometimes water doesn't seem so tempting to me when I'm just sitting, especially when I'm just working on the computer. But I try to use either lemons. I'm big on cutting up pieces of lemons and putting it in my water. I see that I drink the water faster. Also, there's different health products that, you know, like different vitamins. One's called Vital Reds and they have different flavors. And a, a lot of times you're getting all your vitamins because I also think vitamins are really important for you, whether it's for all your overall health, also for sleep. But I try to add that to my water because it makes it more tasteful. And so I enjoy it more. So I find myself drinking the water, you know, like not just chugging it faster, but just drinking more bottles throughout the day. But I also feel better the more I drink water. So I feel, you know, more energized naturally. I just feel more alert. I feel refreshed. Like water has good proponents to it and we need it. Like everything's made up of water. Like water is super important. So as much as coffee also is made of water, just having regular natural water is very important. So I try with the bottles everywhere. 
Yeah. And then a lot of women, you know, we tend to have headaches more, <clears throat> especially as our hormones change throughout the month. We tend to be, um, have brain fog and dehydration can make all those things worse. And so, especially as women, we got to have the bottles everywhere and try to be sustainable, right? And use a, a steel bottle if you have tea or coffee like you and I do, something to keep it warm and then just have it everywhere. Because if you see it, you'll use it. Like for me, if I get, I really get into my work, three hours will go by. I haven't even taken a sip of water and I didn't even realize it, right? But if it was, it's up in front of me, I will use it. And I agree with you. One of those um, vitamins that really helps us sleep is magnesium. So if you can get something, those electrolyte kind of drinks, they have magnesium in them. They help you relax and they help you sleep. So those are great additions. I use the, the squeeze bottle lemon, like a high quality squeeze bottle, because I ain't cutting up all the lemons. But... Because every time I have a cut them, I don't cut them and then nothing. You know, so for me, it's like, what is the path of least resistance to get me to drink water? And so my little bottle, squeeze a little lemon or lime juice in there. And, and I like it room temp, which is weird, but I drink more of it that way. So that's my, that's my path of least resistance. And I say the name of that one you recommended again, Vital Reds. Vital Reds. There oh, is, okay. um, I forgot the doctor's name, but. I think it's also like by a doctor, but I, I remember the on the bottle it said Vital Reds, and that same brand does variations of different, like let's say supplements, like health supplements. So a lot of times I'm just mixing those different bottles in uh, in my water, just so that way I can, um, I can one drink the water, and then two have some of those vitamins in me that I, sometimes I forget to take my natural, like my my vitamin pills in the morning. And so that's a, usually a good backup because I try to leave those everywhere where I leave my water bottles. Yeah. And then I've used like flavored collagen to put in water. I like my mm -hmm. green powder to mix those in too. So those are ways to get hydrated. Herbal tea is not just plain water. Like if you don't like the taste of plain water, there's lots of variations, but the goal is to make it hydrating. So like you said, coffee does have water, but it can be dehydrating to your body. So it can tea. And so you have to make sure you balance it out. So great tips, Maggie. Thanks. Let's talk about intuition. This one is, you know, like we as women, if we kind of know that we have this woman's intuition, we feel it when we're kids. And then as we get older, people start kind of telling us stuff that makes us question it. And then now we come into womanhood and it's still there and we have to reconnect. So what's been your experience with reconnecting with your intuition? I try to really listen to myself. And, and go with the feelings that I'm feeling. I noticed that sometimes when I would meet some people throughout my life and I've had a bad vibe, like I usually went with that. And, and usually they were right for me at least. And then sometimes when I would have the same feeling, then I, let's say I would notice my friends would not have that same vibe. Then I would think like, oh, well, maybe my vibe's wrong. Let me, let me go against my vibe. Usually when I went against my vibe, I ended up regretting. Like I ended up saying like, no, I should have, I should have knew better. Like I should have just listened to myself. Like my, my friends are crazy <laughs> in a nice way. It's, but I would say, you know, like I should have just went with it. And so from those experiences, then I just said, you know what, I'm just going to go with how I feel. Like if I am getting a bad vibe about doing something, I'm just not going to do it. If I get a bad vibe about, you know, a person, a certain person, I'm just not going to put myself around that person. And so it's really just kind of getting to know yourself and knowing what your body's kind of telling you, uh, because sometimes it would just be like a weird feeling. It's a weird feeling that I would get in the moment, but you kind of have to notice that you're having that feeling and it's not just something else. And I would also then try to, if I'm questioning my feeling, I would try to ask like a relative about it, whether it's my mom or my husband or my brother or my mother-in-law, like those are the main people in my life. And so a lot of times I would just like ask them like, hey, like this is what I'm kind of going through. This is what I think. Like, what are your thoughts? And, you know, either they'll affirm or they'll give me a different perspective. So then I still either rely on my intuition to start like that basis. But then there's, I feel like there's nothing wrong with trying to get like advice from somebody else to say like, hey, like, you know, am I feeling this right? Or or is this wrong? You know, should I, should I be approaching this differently? Yeah. And sometimes maybe it's like imposter syndrome, right? Where you don't trust yourself, but you, it was like a learned lack of trust in yourself. And so you have to kind of see, is this my insecurity or is this like my intuition? 
right? Yeah. And then that's that's what I talk about. When we're young, we trust it. But then as we get older, different messages from the world, especially as women tell us, oh, that's old wives' tales or you're being superstitious. But you're like, no, I feel it in my gut. So how do you deal with imposter syndrome and, and you know, getting back to your authentic self? It's funny because I'm actually, I went for the conference where we got the 36 under 36 award. They, we could as affiliates for like the different organizations we're a part of. And one of the organizations that I'm a part of is the Tampa Hispanic Bar Association. And so for the YLD division for the Tampa Hispanic Bar, we had to, we we're like creating an event and our topic is imposter syndrome. Uh, and so imposter syndrome, I think a lot of us is just something that we have to work at. We kind of have to, you know, really see one, everybody a lot of times feels imposter syndrome. You're not the only one that's feeling it. But then to understanding, like, where is it coming from? And I think sometimes when, when individuals come from diverse backgrounds, like cultures play into that. Being a woman plays into that. I know I had a conversation one time with Professor Church, actually, from Cooley, where I said, you know, sometimes I don't like talking about myself. You know, I always feel weird if I have to, you know, apply for something and, and talk about all the things that I've done and or if, you know, talk about my qualities or my skills or if somebody you know, congrats, congratulates me on a, an award or tries to recognize me and say, oh my God, like all the things you're doing is so amazing. But I always feel weird. Like, oh, okay, thank you. Like, you know, I don't, I don't, I, I guess I don't like to boast about it. But I think a part of that has to do with culturally, like women, like we're always taught to like kind of be more, more shy and more timid about the things that we do, not to really enjoy it. And so, but I think that's a factor under imposter syndrome is that we don't realize that we're doing all these great things. And that it's really coming from what we're doing, not just because we're lucky, not just because we knew somebody, not just because I, you know, any other factor that's not just, that's not relating to my skills and me working hard or me doing, you know, endless hours of working on a specific project. So I try to tell myself like, no, I, I did this. I try to remember the work that I did to get to this point. Especially if it's being, let's say, if I'm being congratulated on a specific project. No, like I, these were all the days, like reflect in that moment when somebody's thanking you what you did to, to get that thank you, essentially, or to, you know, to enjoy those moments. Because if you don't try to remember those things, I think that's where you can kind of deceive yourself into believing like, no, it wasn't, it wasn't because of anything that you did. It, you know, you just got lucky by winning this award. No, there's a lot more to your background. You, you kind of have to do a lot of self-reflection and be like, like, this is this is how I got this. Yeah. And like you said, women and like across cultures are trained to be humble no matter what, never to brag. And if you're confident as a woman, people are like, well, what's wrong with you? Why are you acting like that? And, it, uh, you know, I embraced that a long time ago. Like, I'm going to brag about myself because nobody else is going to do it for me. And so I post all the time on then people are like, oh, it's doing a lot of things. I'm like, yes, I am. <laughs> no, like I've worked hard to create these opportunities, these networks, these podcasts, these books. Like I did that. And so, but it is something that as women, we have to relearn because I have a young daughter now and she tells you what she wants, what she wants and she speaks her mind, right? All, all, most kids are like that, especially old girls, but we're training to stop doing that. And then now, like you said, you become a professional where you have to interview and you have to, you know, brag right. about yourself and you're so uncomfortable doing it, right? Yeah. And so let's let's find a way that we can do it in our own authentic way. Everybody's not gonna be like me. I'm very outspoken, but I like your advice. Look for the evidence. It's there that you put in this work. And then you're like, okay, yeah, this makes sense. I did work for this and earned it. So let's talk about nourishment, all this running around and working, right? Sometimes you can forget to eat. Sometimes you're grabbing whatever's there. And then not just nourishing your body with food, but also experiences, relationships. How do you nourish yourself? So when it comes to food, I try to leave, one, I try to invest in a lot of different protein bars or a lot of different healthy snacks because sometimes it's so easy to buy the big box of, you know, the ones that are filled with the Cheetos and Doritos and the different types of chips. No, instead of those boxes, you know, go buy the protein bars or go buy the, um, they have like the, the nuts with the different fruits, like the dried fruits, like those bags. So I try same thing kind of with the water. I try to leave those snacks in reach. And then that way, every, every time that I'm kind of getting a craving, I can snack on it, especially because I feel like whenever I'm working, I'm, 
sometimes I get the hungriest with snacks because I just want to munch as I'm as I'm working on something. I just want to want to nibble on something. And then another thing when it comes to like fitness, they kind of tell you like the way to keep your metabolism going is by you're supposed to be snacking every two hours. You're supposed to be nibbling on something every two hours. And sometimes that's actually a lot harder to do than than people think to actually be mindful of, oh, OK, I got a snack at this point. But keeping yourself healthy, because if you have a happy gut, I think you have a happy mind. You know, everything that you're feeding your gut is going to ultimately feed into your hormones. You know, that's a lot of times is what they say about depression is it has to do with, you know, hormonal imbalances. But what are that goes back to how we're eating? Like, what are we putting in our bodies? And then I also try to stay engaged in other things like uh, conferences. I love going to different conferences or different events because I feel like either, you know, I'm learning something new from the, that event. Like if they have a speaker or if they have a certain uh, topic that's going on, I'm learning from that. And then also like networking events, getting to meet new people can be fun. A lot of times, too, they have different snacks that you can try, different like, you know, appetizers. So you're kind of doing a two in one where you're feeding yourself, plus you're getting to meet people and you're staying engaged with others. But I think throwing yourself out there and being a part of different groups is important. Uh, I, like I said, I, you know, I'm part of the Tampa Hispanic Org, but I'm also part of HCBA, the Hillsborough County Bar Association. And then I'm also a part of uh, I just joined. They just created a. Palestinian American, Palestinian Bar, American Bar Association. Bar Association. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. I see that. You joined it? Yeah. So I joined that. And you get to, you, you know, the cool thing about these different orgs is a lot of times they create group chats and then you can interact with pe people through group chats. And sometimes if you're just struggling with something, you can throw that in there. And and people are so willing to talk and to help and, and, and be there that it's sometimes it feels a little unreal. Because it's just like, wow, like so these people don't know me, you know, I, I've never met this person in person, but they're willing to like spend time to like either respond, you know, via a text message or via an email to help me out with something or even say like offer like, hey, if you, you know, you want to talk about this, let's let's talk over the phone. I think all that that engagement with others helps and it it, it, it keeps you motivated. Like, you know, that's what life is about. It's about being with other people and and learning all these different things and it gets you all these different experiences that you're like wow i you know i feel like it makes you wiser yeah so you covered the e engagement and shine so it's all good they yeah. usually go together but i'm i'm so happy to hear i did see that the palestinian american bar association started i'm surprised it wasn't one before but you know that's what's great about recognizing a need and then taking the action to start it because you there is a need and there's uh a lot of you want to support one another and support people across not just the state, but the country, be a positive message with everything that's going on. And like you said, you have to, people have to get to know you, know where you're from, to finally meet people face to face, talk to them to really start to understand what's going on. So I'm very um, proud that you're a charter member of that organization. I'm so proud of you, especially seeing you, you know, blossom from being a student to being a a colleague and very active and award-winning and doing all the things. And so thanks so much, Maggie, for sharing how you let your light shine. Any last words for our audience? Well, I just want to say that make sure, you know, for, for people to just, you know, know yourself, like be honest with yourself, focus on your branding. I think that's a big key. Like, you know, if you want to be known for this, then do that. You know, if you want to tell somebody like, hey, Oh, you know, I'm going to do this for you, then make sure you follow up with your word or, you know, or if you don't, then that's part of your brand. Like, then that's what people are, will remember you by. And then just integrate, you know, uh, I want to say working out, but it doesn't necessarily need to be working out because that's something that I struggled with throughout the year is in integrating more exercise into my life. But that could just be as simple as walking your dog, like even if it's more consistent, just going out and taking out that breath, you know, um, of fresh air. And and integrating those moments, like remember, you're no good if if you're if you're not taking care of yourself. So you're no good for yourself. You're no good for your family. You're no good for your job. So if you don't keep yourself number one, you know, like you said, like you know, you're your biggest advocate. So I think that's that's all the advice that I'd have. But I thank you, thank you for having me today, and I'm glad to do this podcast with you. It was a lot of fun, and I'm glad to have you as a colleague too. So thank you. Oh, thank you. All right. We'll see you guys next time. As we come to the close of another enlightening episode of Let Your Light Shine. 
I want to thank you sincerely for joining us today. It's been a true joy and privilege to share this space with you and our inspiring guest. Before we part ways, I'd like to leave you with a small nugget of wisdom to carry with you. Remember, the light you hold within is a beacon of hope, strength, and beauty. It's uniquely yours, and when you let it shine, you not only illuminate your own path, but also light the path of others. If you've been inspired by our conversation today, I encourage you to explore more at lightshinebook.com where you can find additional resources and support on your journey to unleashing your inner glow. And if you enjoyed today's episode, please share it with someone who might also benefit from its message. Remember to subscribe to our podcast on your favorite platform so you never miss an episode of Let Your Light Shine. As we say goodbye for now, remember that every day is an opportunity to embrace your power, cultivate joy, and most importantly, let your light shine. Until next time, I'm Jocelyn Jean-Louis Hardrick, wishing you peace, love, and light. Thank you for listening and keep shining bright.